In this video, I have a NAD 517 multi disc or 5 disc CD changer to say. Um, this one here, the client says it skips. They brought it to me with a couple of their own discs in it that they uh, have demonstrated. I actually got a phone call and she played it with me over the phone so I could hear it cutting in and out. So I would believe her. So here's the unit. I haven't opened it up yet. What we're going to do is we're going to pop the top off this thing because it was brought to me with CDs in, which is, by the way, the way you don't want to transport your CD player with discs in it because uh, one of these carousel players, if you transported the discs in it, the discs are going to fall out of place, and then if you try to open it, well, you could have a problem. So here's the unit open. So the first thing I want to do before digging into this, thing, I want to check for any mechanical problems, such as the grease drying up in the mechanism. Let's take a look at okay, that. Okay, this CD player is intermittently skipping when it's been playing for a while. Typically when it's getting closer to the end of the disc, it will pause momentarily and, well, the, the grease that's on the rail has come really kind of sticky. So I don't know whether the laser is weak on this at this point or whether it's just the laser is, is physically sticking because it plays fine for most of the disc and then when you get to the closer to the end of the of the disc it momentarily pauses so I'm just going to clean up the rail here and uh, we'll test this thing some more it may be a, a laser that's getting weak on this unit but it also could be a mechanical problem caused by um, the actual sled sticking and then what happens is as the motor um, increases its power to overcome the stick it overshoots and skips forward that was quite a common problem on a lot of the older units so the first thing we're going to put some new molybdenum grease or molly coat grease on here and uh, we'll try that and see whether that will solve the intermittent skipping problem. If it still skips after lubricating, then it's a good chance that it's the actual optical pickup that is getting weak. And we'll have to put the scope on it and take a look at the eye pattern. But I want to eliminate any um, mechanical problems. So I'm just going to put some fresh grease onto the rails. and work it in. Put the disc tray back in and we'll try playing the trouble disc again. Obviously I can't play this on YouTube or I'll get a little bit of a problem, so I'm just going to listen to it. Okay, before I condemn the optical pickup on the unit, I want to make sure that my tracking and um, my tracking gain and my EF balance and stuff is correct. If we look on the scope here, we're seeing some peaks. This is where, the, where it's skipping. So what I'm going to try first before condemning any parts, I'm just going to check the alignment. You can hear it. It's now stuck, right? Okay, that's performing a little better there. I'm still seeing some peaks here. I don't want to have that play for too long there because you know how it is, right? Okay, let's see if I can get... I'm going to try the EF balance. The, the control I was adjusting there was the tracking gain, by the way, T gain. This is the EF balance. And see, right now it's really quite sensitive. But if I... I'm trying to minimize those, those peaks. That's what I'm trying to do. 
where it spikes. That's not good there. So obviously I have to keep the sound turned down when the camera is running here because I don't want to pull a copyright strike on here. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to minimize the fluctuations, the, speak, the peaks that you see there. So I'll be tweaking it a bit here, but I'm going to actually go off camera to do the fine adjustment because I have to have the sound on obviously while I'm doing that. But we're going to try and minimize the peaks and see whether we can correct the fault on this laser, or the fault on this pickup. Aha. I'm going to play here and just let the CD play through. The CD was skipping pretty bad, so we'll try that and see whether that's going to uh, solve this problem. It may have just been the servos have drifted a bit on here because of the age of it. You have components in here. This is an analog circuit on a lot of these older machines. So when you get capacitors and stuff that start to age, they get out of alignment a bit and then your gain goes a bit off. Still seeing a bit of a few spikes here, so that's, a, that's obviously of concern. Um, but uh, let me just take a listen to this thing and see how it sounds. Incidentally, the, the test point that I'm scoping is it's called the TE or the tracking error. That's what the, the test point I'm scoping. <clears throat> so what we're looking for is we're, we're trying to smooth this waveform out so that there's not a lot of peaks because that's when you're getting an error and when it's trying to correct, you'll get a spike. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to balance with the tracking gain and the, and the EF balance here. We're trying to minimize that, the, amount of, uh, the amount of spikes that are being detected. Uh, spikes are a problem because that means that the servo is trying to respond and um, usually when it does, it'll, well usually it happens when you skip. So we're trying to balance the, 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 uh, the tracking servo so that they are not, so that the beam is not hitting the side spot detectors. That's when it shows up as a spike here is when side spot detectors on the uh, optical pickup are being activated. So this is getting to be pretty good now. I'm not seeing anywhere near the number of, uh, of spikes I was getting before and it's not skipping. So I'm just going to let the CD play, we'll, we'll let a few CDs play on it and uh, if it continues to perform okay, I'm going to send it back and uh, let the customer try it out and see how it's working. See when the tracking error is working properly, I can tap this thing, if I hit it hard it's going to skip, but if I tap it, you'll actually see it pick up the, when I tap, you see the waveform there change slightly, right? That's the tracking error circuit working, but it's not not skipping if I whack it really hard like that well <laughs> if I hit it hard enough right we're gonna knock the laser physically off track and it's got to retract but that's that's how the circuit is supposed to work it, it's it'll it'll take compensate for some vibrations and it also compensates for if you notice the disc here there, there's always a slight eccentricity uh, error on all compact discs because the hole is never punched exactly center on mass-produced discs. It could be off by a couple microns. So the disc itself, when it's spinning, is actually doing this. And the tracking servo has to track that. As the spiral, as the laser is tracking, the spiral is moving like that, the track. So that the lens actually has to track that as it's moving. So that's where the adjustments of your, your tracking gain, your tracking offset, and your EF balance are critical. Too little gain and it's not going to track and it's going to skip. Too much gain and it's going to overcompensate for the, the actual errors that are on pretty much every CD that's ever been made. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a careful balance between too little gain and too much gain. And the way we look at it on the scope is we try to minimize, we try to minimize those big swings. Um, that, that way we can maximize the tracking ability. Okay, this thing's been playing now. Uh, it's it played all three CDs is played completely through from beginning to end, and I'm now playing the Nora Jones CD again, and I haven't heard it skip a beat. So I'm going to send this one home to the customer and let them play it and make sure that everything's okay. But I think that all the problem was with this was just due to aging of components, we ended up with a bit of a bias problem here in the tracking gain and the EF balance, and uh, that was causing it to uh, to to skip slightly. Adjusting that, minimizing the amount of 
errors detected. As you can see, we still get the odd one, but that's normal. We were getting tons of them before, and it was constantly skipping. So I think we're going to send this one out and just give it a try and see without changing any parts on it and see if that solved the problem. And as always, thanks for watching.